Welcome to We The Travelers, where we bring you unfiltered travel information. Today, we're diving into everything you need to know for your next adventure to the stunning pearl of the Indian Ocean, Sri Lanka. This enchanting island is renowned for its lush rainforests, golden beaches, tea plantations, vibrant culture, and ancient temples. In this video, we'll guide you through Sri Lanka's ETA process, a well-planned travel itinerary, an unforgettable train journey, and a detailed travel budget. Plus, we'll throw in essential tips and reveal a few hidden gems along the way. So, let's get started. The very first thing you'll need to enter Sri Lanka is an ETA, or Electronic Travel Authorization. Let's begin by walking you through the quick and easy steps for obtaining your ETA. Open Sri Lanka's official website to obtain an ETA, you can find the link in the description. Read the alert for all the latest information regarding an ETA. Press OK to proceed. Select your preferred language. I will be continuing with English. You can find all the information regarding ETA on this page, including how to apply for ETA, fees, and checking your application status. You can go through this information, anyway we will be covering all of this in detail in this video. You can check for the ETA fees, on the Fees tab. Let's now proceed to apply for an ETA. Click the Apply tab and click on the By the Applicant option. Now click on Apply and a new tab will open. Read through all the details and click I agree. You will find different types of visa options. Select the apply for an individual option under Tourist ETA. Fill out the general information. This should be a fairly simple one. You can enable this checkbox to fill out the information about your children traveling with you, if any. Fill out the details and click the Add Child option below. You can also add multiple children. Fill out all the other remaining information. Your ETA will be valid for 30 days from the date of arrival. For the purpose of the visit option, select Sightseeing and Holiday. Port of Entry and Flight Details are optional fields. You can add or ignore it. I would recommend to add the details. For address in Sri Lanka, add your accommodation details if you have booked it. If not, you can find some random hotel details on the internet and fill them in. This will not be verified.
Click Next and verify all your details before you submit your application and proceed with payment. Click Confirm to proceed. You have multiple payment options to choose from. I select the Visa card payment option. Add payment details and complete the payment. You should receive your ETA within three business days. You can also check your ETA status from the check status option on the home page. Moving on. We present to you a comprehensive seven-day itinerary for exploring the wonders of Sri Lanka. Let's break down Sri Lanka's backpacking adventure into four distinct areas. Traveling between these captivating destinations is as effortless as enjoying a plate of cotton. First up, the north, offering a plethora of cultural experiences. Second, the east, renowned among backpackers and surfers alike. Third, the south, boasting more beaches, albeit a bit touristy compared to the east. And right in the middle, the mountains. We've crafted a seven-day itinerary to give you the best of what Sri Lanka has to offer. So, without further ado, let's dive into the itinerary. Day 1. You'll land in Nigombo, home to Sri Lanka's airport, located approximately 40 kilometers from Colombo. Consider heading directly to Dambala by cab or opt for a night's rest near the airport, taking a morning cab to Dambala. Alternatively, stay in Colombo and catch a bus to Dambala the next day. Cabs are pricier, while buses are incredibly budget-friendly. Once in Dambala, check in at your hotel, relax, and explore the Dambala caves via a convenient tuk-tuk. Also, arrange for a tuk-tuk for an early morning hike to Pijarangala Rock the next day. Day 2. Embark on a sunrise hike to Pijarangala Rock, offering breathtaking views of Lion Rock. Take a tuk-tuk to the hike's starting point. The trek is straightforward with a few challenging climbs. After the hike, enjoy breakfast and catch a bus to Kandy. Upon reaching Kandy, explore the Temple of the Tooth in the evening after 6 p.m. Day 3. Catch an early morning train from Kandy to Nura Elia, experiencing one of the most scenic train journeys. You can pre-book your train tickets online. Nura Elia, known as Little England, offers pleasant walks around the town, lake, and garden. Alternatively, skip this and take a train directly from Kandy to Ella. Day 4. Take a tuk-tuk from Nura Elia to Ella. The train journey from Nura Elia to Ella is beautiful but crowded. Upon reaching Ella, explore the charming town. Day 5. Embark on an early morning hike to Little Adams Peak for a stunning sunrise. On your way back, visit the Nine Arches Bridge. After completing your hike, take a bus to Matara, which can be a lengthy journey of 4 to 5 hours. Consider checking bus timings in advance. Once in Matara, Take a bus or tuk-tuk to Mirissa, a short 20-minute ride. Alternatively, opt for a slightly more expensive cab directly from Ella to Mirissa. Enjoy your evening by the beach in Mirissa and treat yourself to a couple of well-deserved beers. Depending on the time of year, you can also consider exploring the East Coast, avoiding the rainy season. Day 6. Take a bus from Mirissa to Gao. Explore Gal for a few hours, then return to Mirissa for a relaxing evening by the beach. Visit Parrot's Point on Mirissa Beach at night for a delightful surprise. Day 7. Start your day with breakfast and head to Matara. Catch a highway bus from Matara to Nagombo Airport around 1 p.m. Make sure you take the highway bus, which is a non-stop bus, and not the other one which will take more than 5 hours to reach. Important tips. Purchase a SIM card in town for a much lower cost than at the airport. Download the Pick Me app for convenient cab bookings. Sri Lankan buses are incredibly affordable. Advance book your train tickets from the official website. 
Sri Lanka is a beautiful country and the people of Sri Lanka are very sweet and helpful. Enjoy your time in Sri Lanka, hope it will be an unforgettable travel experience of your life. Moving on. Where today we're embarking on a captivating journey through Sri Lanka by train. From securing your tickets to traversing the lush landscapes and marveling at the iconic Nine Arch Bridge, we'll guide you through the enchanting experience of Sri Lankan rail travel, celebrated as one of the most picturesque journeys globally. Enjoy this beautiful video all about the Sri Lankan train and all the information needed while traveling on a train in Sri Lanka. So, let's set off on this rail adventure without further delay. Train Ticket Booking Guide Starting with the essentials, booking your tickets. The Sri Lankan railway system simplifies the process, allowing you to reserve your seats from anywhere around the globe, bypassing the need for a local contact number. Forget navigating through third-party sites or tour operators, direct bookings can be made through the official website, linked in our video description. Bookings open a month in advance, and with seats filling up quickly, especially over weekends and peak seasons, we advise securing your tickets early. The prices of tickets vary, but I can tell you one thing, it is very cheap, the cheapest you can find in any country. You can also watch my other video about the travel budget to Sri Lanka. Ensure to collect a physical copy of your online ticket at the station well before your departure. The journey from Nigombo to Colombo. Your adventure likely begins upon landing at Bandaranaik International Airport, located not in Colombo, as often assumed, but in the coastal city of Nigombo, 40 kilometers away. If Colombo is your intended destination, a convenient train from Nigombo will whisk you there in comfort. The Nigombo station is a short distance from the airport, easily reached on foot or by tuk-tuk. Since train schedules vary daily, check the latest timings at the station to plan your trip seamlessly. Exploring from Colombo to Kandy and Nura Ilaya. Should your itinerary include the historic city of Kandy or the serene Nura Ilaya, known affectionately as Little England, trains from Colombo serve both destinations. You can also check out my video of the Sri Lanka travel itinerary to help you plan yours. Kandy, with its station centrally located, is easily accessible, and from there, you can catch another train to Nura Ilaya. I had just walked to the railway station, which was 3 kilometers away from my stay. The station for Nura Ilaya is Nanyu Oya, a 20-minute tuk-tuk journey away. The train ride from Kandy to Nura Ilaya is a highlight not to be missed, offering breathtaking views that epitomize the beauty of Sri Lankan rail travel. This is one of the most beautiful train rides in the world. If you don't have plans to visit Nura Ilaya, you can plan your destination to Ella as well. Kandy to Nura Ilaya or Ella. As I already mentioned you can book a separate ticket from Kandy to Nura Ilaya. But when it comes to booking a ticket from Kandy to Ella you might face an issue, because you cannot find this train on the official website. You might have to contact an agent or better try booking the Train 12 Go Asia website in advance. You can also book this ticket from the counter in Sri Lanka, but that might not be a feasible option and most of the tickets get sold out pretty soon.
This journey though beautiful, will take a whole day as the train travels at will slower pace. Alternatively, you can go to Nura Elia or Badulla, for which the tickets can be booked on the official website. An important tip, book a second class train ticket and avoid the AC coaches. You can open the second class train windows and enjoy the cool breeze, which cannot be done in an AC coach. Nura Elia to Ella or Badulla to Ella. I would just say avoid it and take another means of transport. A third class ticket can only be booked from the railway station a few hours before the arrival of the train, alternatively, you can book through an agent. But I would say avoid this train as it gets too crowded to even keep your feet on the train. And it will not get better from the next four hours of the journey. You will hardly have a view to enjoy the view. Another very important tip people tend to think that a train to Ella will go through the famous Nine Arch Bridge, but sadly that is not the train that goes through the Nine Arch Bridge, Nine Arch Bridge is after the Ella railway station which I will cover in the final section of this video. Ella to Demodara, the famous train over the Nine Arch Bridge. This is a 30 to 40 minute train journey that goes through the famous Nine Arch Bridge. You can book the third class tickets from Ella railway station but just make sure you are ready for the overcrowded train. This is a world-famous bridge and people tend to click a lot of photos over this train. The famous kissing photos over the Nine Arch Bridge. You can also enjoy this view by visiting the Nine Arch Bridge from Ella. It is just a normal 30-minute hike from the Ella town. Though crowded it is still a good place to visit. I would highly recommend visiting and make sure you find out the train timings to experience the view of the beautiful train passing over the bridge. You can easily find the timings in Ella. Moving on. Sri Lanka travel budget. Unraveling the costs of exploration. In this video, we're embarking on a journey through the essential aspects of traveling to Sri Lanka for 7 to 10 days, dissecting 5 key elements, flight tickets, internal transportation, accommodation costs, food expenses, and entrance fees for attractions. Without further ado, let's dive into the captivating realm of exploring the travel budget in Sri Lanka. Flights cost. The cost of flight tickets hinges on your departure location. Traveling to Bandaranaik International Airport in Nigombo, which is around 35 kilometers from Colombo. From Bangalore in India, my one-way flight was approximately 120 US dollars. The return journey added another 120 US dollars, rounding it up to 240 US dollars. Prices fluctuate based on factors like the timing of ticket bookings, the time of travel, and your departure location. For this video, let's consider the flight cost as 250 US dollars, bringing our total travel cost so far to 250 US dollars. Internal travel cost. Let's delve into my itinerary to assess the expenses of traveling within Sri Lanka. A cab from Nigombo to Dambala came to 45 US dollars. The bus journey from Dambala to Kandy amounted to 1 US dollar. Taking the train from Kandy to Nura Elia incurred a cost of 4 US dollars. Another train ride from Nura Elia to Ella added 1 US dollar. Busing from Ella to Mirisa contributed 1 US dollar and 50 cents. The bus ride from Mirisa to Nagombo Airport accounted for approximately 6 US dollars. Exploring various locations within the cities demanded an additional 40 US dollars. Rounding off these costs, the total expenditure on travel amounts to around 100 US dollars. This brings our cumulative travel cost thus far to 350 US dollars. Accommodation cost. Determining the cost of accommodation is a nuanced task, influenced by various factors. For a comfortable stay spanning nine nights for two people, homestays, a popular and cost-effective option, often include breakfast. During my journey, I spent a night in Nigombo, Dambala, and Nura Elia, and two nights each in Kandy, Ella, and Nirisa, totaling nine nights. The cumulative cost for this stay amounted to approximately 165 US dollars. 
while breakfast inclusion varied, excluding it brings the average nightly cost to 18 US dollars. This figure can be significantly lower for budget-friendly backpackers and higher for those seeking a more luxurious experience. With the accommodation costs now incorporated, our total travel expenditure reaches 515 US dollars. Food cost. Over nine days, I spent around 82 US dollars on food. Rounding it up to 90 US dollars makes an average of 10 US dollars per day cost for food in Sri Lanka. The total travel cost now comes to 605 US dollars. Entrance fees for attractions. Understanding that entrance fees vary for citizens and foreigners, let's break down the costs as a foreigner. During my visit, I explored different attractions. Dambala Caves, explored for 2 US dollars. Pidurangala Rock in Sigeria, wandered for 3 US dollars. Tri Daleda Maliga in Kandy, immersed in culture for 5 US dollars. Buddha Temple in Kandy, spiritual exploration for 1 US dollar. Victoria Park in Nura Elia, nature's beauty for 1 US dollar and 50 cents. Rounding up these entrance fees, the total comes to around 15 US dollars, contributing to the grand total travel cost of 620 US dollars. So, the total travel cost for Sri Lanka for 9 days would be around 620 US dollars. There are a few attractions like Lion Rock, Yala National Park, and whale watching that might cost a little more if included in your itinerary. Always check the prices online to plan your budget accordingly. Budget breakdown for different travelers. Now, to conclude our Sri Lanka budget, let's break down the travel cost for different types of travelers. Seven days in Sri Lanka should be doable in 500 US dollars. Ten days might cost a little above 600 US dollars. For luxury travelers, 500 US dollars to 1000 US dollars should be sufficient for 7 to 10 days. For a budget backpacker, traveling to Sri Lanka for a month can even be done in 1000 USD. That concludes our comprehensive breakdown of the travel budget for Sri Lanka. I hope this information helps you plan your trip effectively. For any further questions comment below on the video. Happy traveling! Subscribe, like, and share to help we the travelers create more content for adventurers around the world.